take it is when considering resources, half of the equation is consumption, while the other half is water disposal. And eventually that all returns to the atmosphere, which leads to pollution. The introduction of harmful substances or products into the environment. All resources are eventually returned to the Earth. When dealing with pollution, there are three main sources, air, water, and land pollution. First, we'll talk about air pollution. Earth's atmosphere is made up of 78% of nitrogen, 21% of oxygen, and less than 1% of argon. Common pollutants in the atmosphere include carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen oxide. Global warming, which in simplicity looks like this, causing temperatures to rise due to the burning of fossil fuels. Also, with more CO2 being released into the atmosphere, over the next several decades it is predicted that temperatures will rise by several degrees. And also, CFCs, or chlorofluorocarbons, are also leaking into the atmosphere and causing a breakdown of the protective layers of gas. And now on to our first interview. How would you define air pollution? I would define air pollution as chemicals being released into the air in great quantities that aren't normally there, causing our ozone layer to be depleted. Okay. When you think of air pollution, what do you think of? I think of CO2 being emitted into our atmosphere, destroying the ozone layer. Okay. Let's talk about the ozone layer and like global warming and what's destroying our ozone layer. When you think of global warming, what do you think of? I think of global warming. I think of this the heat from the sun not being able to escape the atmosphere causing the polar ice caps to melt. Now what is causing the what's the main cause of the depletion of the ozone layer? Well, for a while, before the CFCs were um, outlawed and major hair care products such as hairspray, um, it was CFCs for a while, and now it is the CO2s being emitted from uh, transportation means such as cars, buses, trucks, etc. Okay. Um, what about regional scale air pollution? Well, I feel that regional scale, the CO2 is being released into the air, causing affecting our precipitation, which causes acid, which affecting the precipitation would mean that acid rain, which is I feel is ruining our vegetation. Moving on to local scale air pollution, uh, where is that mainly found, and what does it really do? It's mainly found in urban areas, as means or er, smoke and. Smog is currently being generated from plants and, well, industrial plants and cars and trucks and trains and things like that. Okay. 
Last question. You personally, you know about all of the things that are damaging the ozone layer. What would you do to try to reduce your carbon footprint? Well, to reduce my carbon footprint, I would look into buying a hybrid car as they're scientifically proven to reduce the amount of CO2 is being released to the air. Or I would just stop ri driving my car as much during, you know, the nights, the more climate-friendly days. And I would ride my bu bike most places or just go for a walk to places instead of always driving places and constantly emitting CO2 to the air. Okay, great, thanks. Now on to water pollution. On average, humans use about 6,000 liters of water. We use them for everyday purposes such as cleaning, in which we use chemicals which would dilute enough to make the water safe for us to use again. Also, you have to worry about point source and non-point source. Point source is when a specific area is being contaminated due to su things such as industry, whereas non-point source is just about anywhere, mo mainly from agriculture. Non-point source is a lot harder con to control because there's so much more of it. Also, we have to worry about biochemical demand, which is when there's too much oxygen in the water due to the decomposing matter taking up the oxygen. And now here's Dr. Parker for an interview. Excuse me, Dr. Parker, can we ask your, question, your professional opinion on some questions? Sure. What are some of the main human purposes for water? That would be cooking, drinking, and bathing. And what are some water pollution sources? Um, they would have to be agriculture, which is when the irrigation systems run off into the rivers and streams with harmful fertilizers and pesticides. Municipal sewage, which takes your dirty water from anything you do, like bathing or cooking or whatever and they clean it and it would have to be industries like water using industries such as steel chemical and paper production companies they use large amounts of water is there any impact on the aquatic life yes when you throw decomposing matter into the water it takes up the oxygen causing dead streams because the animals are becoming oxygen deprived because they use the oxygen just like decomposing matter and are there any like waste like what what kind of disease with the wastewater? Um, they don't really specify, but it would have to be in LDCs you see that disease is more common because they don't have municipal sewage, so they're drinking dirty water from rivers that aren't clean like we have. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. And now on to our last polluted resource, land. As you can see, the hillside behind me is a prime example of land pollution. Every time somebody buys a product, you get an unwanted byproduct with it, and nobody thinks about what you do with those byproducts. Also, there are four pounds of solid waste made daily by the average person in the United States. Paper products are the most common waste in the U.S. Also, when getting rid of the trash that, we're that is used, the sanitary landfill method is used and the area for landfills has declined by three-fourths since 1990. Bigger cities, such as New York City, have taken to transporting their trash to the smaller cities. Also, burning trash reduces the space used by 75%. And lastly, we'll talk about hazardous waste, which we'll learn a little bit more of in our interview to come. But the hazardous waste that we're talking about consists of heavy metals such as mercury, cadmium, and zinc, also, PCB oils from electrical equipment, cyanides, strong solvents, acids, and caustics. Hello. Hi. Can we ask you a few questions? Oh, about what? Land pollution. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. First question. Okay. When we get a product, 
There are four types of unwanted by products that we also get with the product that we get. Mm -hmm. What would you say those are? Well, for one, there's paper, glass, plastic, and metals. Okay. So, m there are about four pounds of solid waste produced each day mm -hmm. by people. How much of it would you say is from residences and how much is from businesses? Well, from residences, there's unfortunately 60% while the remaining 40% would be from the businesses. And what is the most common way the United States disposes of their trash, and are there any problems that occur with that? Well, it would be the sanitary landfills, and of course there's two main problems with this. They dispose of the trash by either burning or burying this trash, and when burning it, CO2 is just released into the atmosphere, just further destroying the ozone layer. Mm -hmm. And then when burying this trash, Chemicals go into like water streams and they f go into like rivers and pollute the water. That way. Speaking of the different problems that occur when dealing with sanitary landfill, mm -hmm. what happens when industries don't properly store or dispose of their poisonous chemicals? The same exact problems dealing with sanitary landfills. So what happens if the poisonous chemicals are released into the air and people are breathing that contaminated air? Uh, serious health problems arise. Okay, last question. What is it that some European and North American firms have tried to do with their waste? They're taking it to West Africa into isolated areas without official consent. Okay, great. Thanks for your time. Oh, it's no problem. Okay, kitties. When considering... Are we recording? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh Water pollution is very serious because humans use it for everyday lives, such as cooking, bathing, and cleaning. Bathing and cleaning are the same thing. <laughs> right! Um, cut that. <laughs> okay, are you rolling? <coughs> not anymore. To kind of fix that, but it's still not going as well as, they sh as, well as it should. And now they're starting to do things such as putting their waste in West Africa, that's the wrong section. Oh yes, it is the wrong section. I'm an idiot! <laughs> yeah, they can cut it. You're going to be doing a lot of cutting, because I suck a lot. Ha! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> now moving on to the next route of pollution, water. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> Although we can pollute water, that I already read that. <laughs> practicing for some triathlon. Oh, <laughs> okay. Hey. Hello. Run. I mean bike. <laughs> Should we start over? Yeah. Now moving on to the next pollution source, which is water. Shut up! Quit looking at me! We have to look at you! No, him. He's going... Stop it. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm done. Countries are, or companies are contributing in, too many, in so many ways, such as cars release carbon dioxide from their mufflers and spoilers, or that's not <laughs> And now on to our last pollution re- <laughs> Those are birds. When, de when, de when dealing with resource issues, one needs to consider air, water, and land pollution. With Earth's atmosphere, <laughs> when talking about <laughs> which our last pollution source, resource, polluted resource, <laughs> um, yeah. I have got to stop rocking. Excuse me.
me, Dr. Parker. Can we ask your professional opinion on some questions? Sure. What are some of the main human purposes for water? That would have to be bathing, drinking, and eating. <laughs> <laughs> I am a serious reporter. I am doing this for my career to better myself. I